Well, it's so great for you guys to join me on this midday call as we are participating in Unite 714, which is a global initiative uh, of prayer as nations coming together and praying. And with me is a very uh, special friend of mine that I, we've journeyed in life with for quite some time is uh, Pastor Scott Duma. He is the senior pastor of Every Nation Yokohama. He's the director of uh, Every Nation Japan and director of Every Nation East Asia. And so Scott, super great that you could join me on my call today. Well, it's great to be with you, Bernard. So good to see you. Man, every time I see you, you're looking younger, man. It's the good Japanese food. You betcha. It's a good Japanese wife. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Scott, I, I can't believe this whole lockdown season has been like, I don't know about for Japan, but for us, it's like seven, seven weeks. I think yeah. we're entering our eighth week. And maybe... um. You know, we don't get to hear much about what's happening in Japan and numbers and life. You know, it's the real hot spots that New Zealanders get to to hear about. And so, why don't you just take a moment, tell us about what's life like for you in Yokohama, your country, and uh, where are you guys positioned at this time? Well, you know, here in Japan, of course, we were one of the first kind of hit places when that uh, cruise ship came in here in February. And so um, there was a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear just gripped the whole country. Mm -hmm. And um, the, finally the government came down with some strong, um, this is what we should do or what we shouldn't do. And, and we kind of went into a, uh, you know, self lockdown. The, you know, yeah. there, there wasn't a legal lockdown, but there, there was state of emergency was called uh, from the first week of April. But we haven't had services like since March. And uh, wow. but um, our, you know, Japanese people are, are very compliant. They're very, um, if the government says you should do this, they don't have to make laws to do it. it people pretty much follow it what the government says. So we've seen a drastic reduction in our numbers. And uh, even yesterday in Tokyo, for the first time since March, there was less than um, 10 uh, reported cases in Tokyo and less than 50 in the whole country, which we're, we're delighted to hear that. So hopefully uh, come around uh, June 1st is the state. There'll be, a, of course, they're calling it a new normal where we'll, we'll start up again and keep eyes so that the thing doesn't come back. But, um, you know, we've lost probably throughout the whole country. It's not quite 700 people, which is sad, but compared to the rest of the world and, yeah. you know, according to our huge population, we've been protected. Yes. Sure. Yeah, no, uh, New Zealand, uh, I think our deaths are about 21, 22, I think. And so, um, yeah, we are currently level two, so um, so we are allowed to get out, but it's very limited. And so people can go to a restaurant, but the maximum number is a group of 10. So as a church, we can broadcast from our facility, but we can only have 10 people. I see. Um, and so, you know, your, your country is uh, on the news here as one of the most, you know, kind of example countries. So we're... You guys should take some, some good pride that you do, whatever you're doing, you did the right thing. So, I think they were pretty quick to shut the border, and I think that was really one of the key: shut the border, stop people moving around in order to isolate what was happening. Um, but you know what? I've loved the lockdown. I've just, missed, <laughs> I've just missed the people. I've missed my yeah, kids. yeah. But at this level now, we are able to interact a little bit, which is really, really great. But so yeah. great that you could join me, uh, Scott. And um, every day from Monday to Friday, we've been reading from 2 Chronicles 7.14. And I've asked Pastor Scott to read the passage of Scripture and to share a gold nugget of insight or challenge or exhortation, just as the Spirit leads him uh, today. And so thank you, Scott. Really appreciate it. Okay, well, thank you, Bernhard. I'm sure you've been getting lots and lots of different nuggets from the scriptures. I've, I've seen a couple of your broadcasts, but let me read it. Um, Second, Corinthians, uh, Second Chronicles 7, verse 14. I'm reading from the ESV. 
If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Um, the, the verse, to, there's a few points here that have just, as, as we've all been praying this basically every day, yeah. um, it's the, the first thing comes up to me, my people, you know, as, as Christians, sometimes we're very close or quick to point the finger and say, well, if they would repent and if they would change and if they yeah. would turn, then things would happen. And, um, you know, some, some people interpret this verse, well, this is only for Solomon and this is for the people of Israel. But when the word says my people, I, I, I have to take that as, as a, whether it's an Old Testament term or whatever, it's still God speaking a principle that is to us to this day. That's right. And so I, I really take that, you know, the, called by his name. We are Christians. We are Christ followers. We're called by his name. And so uh, the action there, of course, is three, to humble, to pray, and to seek, your, seek his face. But especially that word, uh, humbling ourselves. Um, I'm sure Bernhardt and many of you watching this have had the same thing. Through this thing, there's been a shaking that's going on. Yeah. And we see what's in us, which is, is good. You know, I, I'm all over, you know, just looking at all the leaders and, and the people that I'm working with. You see, the, you see these great things that are coming out in them. And in yourselves, but you also see where we built on sand. Yeah. And I and and so what we're doing is say instead of walking in fear and terror, I, I say that this is great. You know, it, of course, shaking is horrible, crisis is horrible. Yeah. But I see, I see what's weak in me, and I see, you know, especially when you're stuck in your home <laughs> with your dear wife all the time, and and uh, you know things that you can just normally kind of walk away from once, but you can't, you have to approach them. You have to deal with them. And then it's great. Once you deal with them, it, there's, there's, first of all, there's a healing that comes in me. Mm. And so I've, I've found, uh, if I humble myself mm. and I think that's what the Lord's saying, I cannot change our prime minister Abe or our governor or our mayors or things like that but judgment begins in the house of god it begins here so i said god shake me look at me and let me humble myself and one of the phrases that i really been grabbing in this whole thing is god don't let me waste this experience yeah because you know by god's grace next year at this time or whatever it'll be a memory yeah. and if we don't grab everything we can get from this you know kairos moment that god's giving us uh, wow, it'd be such a waste. So I don't want to waste it personally. And, um, and so I want to make sure that, you know, we keep humbling ourselves, we keep turning to God, and we pray. That's the thing we got to. So, you know, as, as you said, this lockdown, in a sense, has been so wonderful for me, mm. because I, I get to pray a lot more, I get to yeah. be in the word a lot more, I get to um, just, you know, my Christian life is not in front of people so much it's just me my wife and god so it's yeah. been a really good experience that way yeah. so i trust that you know as as we read through the scripture over and over every day we would say god just shake me i get i can humble me sure and if i humble me yeah then there's going to become healing to my my land i'm looking out over my city right now and i i, I believe that there's healing coming to yokohama and to tokyo because of my humbling myself so. yeah very good you know, I think, you know, one of the things, as you see, you know, I think so often we want to judge other people and, uh, you know, point fingers at so many other people instead of looking in the mirror and uh, asking God, what does he want to do in our lives during this uh, crazy but exciting season? Um, and so I'm just really so encouraged by what you said, Scott, and uh, I really want to encourage every single one of you. You know, we've all been shaken. Make sure we learn the lessons and what God wants to do in our lives in a moment like this, because time's going to go by so, so quickly. Uh, a new normal is going to happen so, so quickly, and we might miss the opportunity of what I believe God wants to do in our lives and through our lives. And so, Scott, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and so we're going we're gonna to pray together. And so <clears throat> we've got a, a powerhouse man from Japan who's going to be praying and I'm going to be praying here from good old Christchurch, New Zealand. And we're going to stand in faith for our nations, but also the nations of the world. 
So thanks, God. If you could lead us in prayer, and I'll pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Lord, we just come before you, and we do humble ourselves. And um, especially on a Monday, as we have looked back at yesterday and hearing your word and, and spending time in worship, whether it was online or not. But as we begin this new week, Lord, let us walk not as weak people, but as humble and meek yes. people, just yeah. totally dependent on you. Mm. And God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. You are in control. And Lord, so from up here in Japan, I pray down to our sister nation there in New Zealand. Our countries are so similar. Our size is so similar. Our earthquakes are so similar. Our experiences are so similar. And so we cry out, God, have mercy upon our nations. I pray yeah. for New Zealand. I pray, God, that this shaking would cause the hearts of, of all the people there, that this original intent that you have for that great nation, oh. God, to come to you and to follow you and to be that new hope, that new place, oh God, let it come to pass. I pray it for Japan yeah. also, this yeah. land which has never known you, that God, by your mercy and grace through this shaking, people's hearts would be open and they would turn to you like never before. Mm. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters there in New Zealand for great peace, for great, um, even a great expectation that when this is over, there's going to be something so big that's about to happen. But mm -hmm. even in the midst, God, they're going to thrive and they're going to succeed and they're going to be full of joy. Their homes are going to be blessed. And, and I pray that their finances would be covered, Lord. Mm -hmm. and that the nation of New Zealand would be healed. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, yeah Father, I just uh, want to pray for the nation of Japan at this time, Lord, and uh, also our nation of New Zealand. I just pray, Father, that your hand will be upon these nations. But, Lord, it's the people that are so important, the lives of people. Lord, we know that your word has promised on so many occasions of the harvest. Lord, I pray for a mighty harvest field in Japan mighty harvest field in New Zealand. I pray that we as believers would always be a mess, a, a carriers of hope, a carriers of love, and, yes. having, uh, and being a carrier of, of serving people, Lord God. Lord, uh, as I've quoted so many times on these calls, uh, Isaiah 60 verse 1, it's time for us to arise, shine, and let our light shine. Let us be the ones that make a difference. Let us not be the one, as Pastor Scott shared, pointing the fingers uh, on who's wrong and who's right. But Lord God, that we would truly humble ourselves because Lord, we are the answers. Lord, we carry the answer. Jesus is the answer uh, for the world today. And so I pray for Pastor Scott and, uh, and all that he carries and, and his responsibilities. I pray your blessing upon him and his family, his wife and his children and grandchildren. Bless them mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, Scott, uh, prior to us uh, coming and, and doing this call, I was just praying for you, and I, I really want to encourage you with, with the Spirit of the Lord today. And, and, I, and I had a picture of you being a general, a military mm -hmm. general, mm -hmm. but I really believe that you are a general in the faith. Amen. And and God has has anointed and appointed you at a time like this in all the responsibilities you carry, not only for your city, but you carry a responsibility for your nation, but also for a region. And I, I, I believe God just, I just want to encourage you. You are a general you. in the faith. Thank you, sir. You carry what is needed at a time like this. And so, Father, Thank I you. pray your blessing upon my brother, Bless him mightily in all the responsibilities he's ca he carries. Pray that you would give him the mind of Christ. I pray that you would give him wisdom. But I pray that you just give him incredible joy as he serves you and he Amen. serves people around him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Scott, so great to see you, mate. Great all the way hard, from yeah. Japan. Woohoo! Love it. And I can't wait for the rugby to be back so we can yeah. see the Japanese side perform again. Yeah, well, they did pretty good. It, it, it changed the country. That was, that's our happy thought of last year. Come on, man. Well, my happy thought was South Africa are the World Cup holders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, and we I, beat them a few years ago, though. And I always, <laughs> I always enjoy, enjoy telling the New Zealanders that. <laughs> love you, Scott. Love to your family. God bless you, hey? Okay, buddy. You give your love to all your family and all of our family there. Okay. Okay, bye. Thanks, Bernard. Bye-bye.